My name is Ramsey. Welcome back to Slay the Spine. We're going to be playing the defect. Uh, just bury that E. Who needs it? All right. So what? We have a streak with the defect right so far. Do we not? I believe we do. Uh, not that it's going to matter at all here. But let's at the very least try our darndest to uphold it. Because, you know, if I didn't have that modifier of having a streak, I wouldn't even care. I wouldn't try. I would just wait for the game to give me a success. But now that we have a streak, well, I feel obliged to actually try. It's Hollywood Handbook's Try Month, and it's apparently mine as well. Uh, all right, do I want to take the 100 gold, go for this early line? So I can hit this elite, one more question mark, and then rest, elite, rest, and then a elite at the very end. It's a very aggressive early floor. Other options include getting two question marks and a rest before our first elite, who would be the Emerald Elite. Three question marks and then another rest, and I decide whether or not to take another elite later. I feel like that's going to leave me a little bit behind the eight ball in terms of the power curve. <clears throat> All right. Not super pleased with how that turn went, but it's okay. I actually just triple defend this turn because I have lethal next turn regardless. I know that I will have at least three strikes in the hand. So I don't need to take one damage that turn in order to dual cast. I'll take a static discharge, Ellie. It's just going to help me get through these elites. Uh, only Smooth Stone started combat with one dex. A huge fan. That is to say, I am. That's to say, of that. Okay, so. Dual cast. Strike, strike, right? 16, 28. So I can't even kill the backliner even if I get lucky here. So that means I definitely just do this. Alright, single strike next hand. Eh, all the dual casts. Make it a wee bit faster. It's difficult to take Cool Headed, especially really early, because I'm about to fight three elites, and Cool Headed is worse than a dead card in a fight against the gremlin knob for that reason I'm not going to be taking it I mean I'm only taking two damage here but that's only courtesy of the oldly smooth stone otherwise I'd be taking four and we all know that's unacceptable uh, now what 19. Yeah, double strike doesn't even do anything here. Because the lightning hits before the enemy loses their curl up. Sunder is really good in the early game. So is Cold Snap. I'll take the Sunder just so that I can deal massive amounts of damage to elites. Ooh, a really early membership card. 50% discount on all products from now on. But it's up against the Gremlin Horn. Whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. Especially with Sunder, that's particularly good. Because then Sunder says, if this kills an enemy, gain four energy and draw one card. I'm taking the Horn. Now, I might want to dodge this first elite and then just go for the rest. Now, the reason I want to do this in particular is because that Sunder needs to be upgraded. The extra damage on it is going to help it more regularly get kills. Which means that I'm gonna trigger the gremlin horn more often. Which overall just means we're gonna have a better life. Yep, I'm just gonna mull this entire hand. Did not want to take the extra six damage I could have taken that turn, and since I already had both of my potion slots filled, potions were worth less to me. Oof. Well, at least I can Sunder immediately kill one of these targets, but doesn't mean I'm pleased about it. And we managed to full defend. Get another target on eight. So that's two strikes or a dual cast hit with the evoked lightning from dead. Ooh, it does manage to kill as well. That's another kill. And then... Three strikes. Here is another kill, and then a defend. I am... Oh, not even a defend. A dual cast for lethal. What beauty. Defragment. 
difficult to turn down to fragment basically ever. Unplayable curse cards can now be played when you play a curse, lose one HP and exhaust it. I'm not going to include curses in the deck. In higher ascension, that becomes really difficult to do. I'll upgrade the static discharge because I'm definitely going to be taking damage in these elite combats. So it suddenly becomes worth a lot more. The Fragment Zap is actually probably a better setup here. Would have especially been a better setup had I drawn Sunder this turn. Oh well. It's really important that I prioritize defense. The Lightning... Uh, the lightning from the da, 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 the other card that I have, Static Discharge, that's going to be enough. Thunder Strike, that's a damage engine with a Static Discharge. Sure, let's give it a go. Juicy Bracelet, Normal Enemy Encounters, and No Longer Encounter in the Question Mark Rooms. I do have an Elite in a couple spaces time. That was a really bad Elite Combat for me. But I also don't have many defensive cards in the deck, so I'm kind of obliged to rest there. Well, not too much I can do about that turn. Just have to accept the three. Alright, Poison Potion, probably not worth that much to me. Recycle? Well, I can hit Thunderstrike or Sunder, but the thing is, then I play a Recycle, and Recycle would have to be upgraded if I want to get the full value of it, right? So, I have to upgrade a Recycle, then play a Recycle, burn a Sunder. Now I only have three cards left in my hand, and I'm expected to spend six energy. I need a lot of draw before recycle, be before the card negativity of recycle, it itself, and then the other card that it exhausts, uh, is viable, frankly. Uh, Beam Cell actually got a lot better when I picked up two particularly large attacks. Not only because it'll help average out the cost of our hand, uh, but also because, you know, 50% extra damage on 32 is 16 more damage. It's pretty significant. All right, Gremlin Knob, depending on what we draw. Oh, I want to get the Zap out there, but the Sunder is extremely correct here. We need to get through this fight really, really quickly. I'm going to use the Essence of Steel here. It'll save me four, four this turn, then three next turn. Probably a little bit the turn after as well. If I'm lucky. Unceasing top, whenever you have no cards in hand during your turn, draw a card. Well, now I could put just a bunch of zero costs in here, but I've already got two threes, so capitalizing entirely on the unceasing top is not really going to be viable here. So, Hexaghost. It's your HP... I thought it was your H... Your max HP divided by 10 plus 1, right, was the damage that it did. Right, but the max HP divided by 10 is flawed, right? So if you have 9, it's not 1. It doesn't round up. It rounds down. Right, so flawed. Um, but apparently it's it's just max HP divided by 12. So 1. The enemy should deal 1 by 6 this turn. Which actually means I could just let Static Discharge go off for a huge amount on turn 2. If I happen to have it. All right. It is really important the enemy only does. Nope, never mind. We're dead. So, uh... About that max HP divided by 12 thing. Like, we're just instantly dead. Anyone want to clarify for me the exact numbers? Because uh, that comment and the upvotes on that comment 
don't seem to have it entirely correct. Let's just charitably say it that way. I was thinking, like, you know, deck of what? By that point, it was 15, 16 something cards. 15, 16? Yeah, it was 15, 16 something cards. Um, so, very, very, very high chance that I have the uh, the static discharge in one of my opening two hands. And if I did, taking the six damage to the face would have meant that I would have generated 12 lightning. 12 by 7 is already a ridiculous amount of damage for just the thunderstrike let alone the possibility that i get it in the same hand as the beam cell play thunderstrike twice and just play the rest of my turns kind of normally and i would have been fine in that fight it's also worth noting the hexagos does a lot of damages e uh, damages does a lot of damages i'm just talking like um it's casey wilson trevor from letter kenny the lightning strikes does a lot of damages to the hexagosts you see um but it would have been that the the Hexaghost does a lot of its damage in intervals of six, especially in its first cycle before it starts picking up strength. Uh, and because of that, and the Oldly Smooth Stone, I would have been able to naturally defend against those pretty perfectly. It was going to be a good fight unless exactly what happened happened. It's also worth noting, I needed to draw no defense on that second turn for that to happen wild. Alright, what do I want here? Well, there's a really, really aggressive opening over here if I want it. Three question marks, rest site. Two elites. The ability to dodge the second one, that's actually really important. Yeah, that's the path we're taking. Uh, transform a card? I may actually just straight up transform a strike. None of the rest of these options are particularly confusing, especially considering it's a non-negotiable shop if I take this path, so I don't want to lose all of my gold just to get two random colorless cards, especially when they could just be garbage. So let's uh, transform probably a defend first. It's more important to keep your aggression intact early, especially if you're going for elites. Ugh, yikes. Aggregate. Yep, there we go. Gain an energy for every six cards in your draw pile. Oh, the deck has to be particularly thick before aggregate is good. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and lean in on this one, right? I'm going to try and have aggregate be good for me. How am I going to try and do that? Well, I'm just going to take basically all of the cards. Excuse me, but I have uh, exempted you from hearing the world's loudest sneeze. I'll take this doubt. Two positions until I can remove it. I'll remove this doubt. One position until I go to a shop. Ah. So here I probably go defrag white noise if I can take it cool headed. I can't, right? 60. Ooh, that's a really early bomb though. At the end of three turns, deal 40 damage to all enemies. Ugh, I can't turn that down. I'm elite hunting. Elite hunting. Oh god, if I get it next hand with Zap, this is going to be so good. So wake up the enemy this turn. <clears throat> they were going to wake up at the end of that turn anyway. Playing the bomb every time is very important. I'll take my 21 block this turn though. Excellent. Goodbye, Log Vulan. Hello, Sundial. Every three times you shuffle your draw pile, gain two energy. Well, that immediately wants me to have a smaller draw pile than a larger one. Which almost immediately says, hey, don't play into aggregate. So you know what? I'm not going to play into aggregate. Reinforced body, the bomb, keep a really thin deck, start cycling through high cost card, high cost card. It's It makes sense to just benefit from the Sundial and nothing else. Here. Um, do I want to take the Sweeping Beam for a little bit of AoE damage? So it's kind of supplemental AoE damage to the bomb. No, I kind of just want to be defensive and then use the bomb. 
I'm gonna get this upgraded. There's a 50-50 in the next position that I'm fighting the Sentinels. Still have to play the bomb next turn. Hopefully the enemy is doing a small attack. They are, but they're making me vulnerable and I've just enraged them twice. So I'm like just dead. That was always going to happen. I was really, really hopeful that I was going to have the Sentinels there. I didn't want to rest in this position. Simply because I wanted the bomb upgrade really, really badly and felt it was probably going to save me a bunch of HP. Um, that being the Gremlin Knob fight and going in with the bomb and uh, not getting the bomb in the first hand. Yeah, right. Not extremely unlucky. That's fine. Uh, but specifically getting the bomb and reinforced body in the same hand is absolute garbage. Uh because Reinforced Body would be play only one skill, defend basically for the entire turn, buying me a free turn. Also worth noting that I actually need to get back into my head that in Ascension 18, elites have more challenging movesets and abilities. The Gremlin Knob is guaranteed to Skull Bash on turn two. In Rage on turn one, Skull Bash on turn two. And, of course, they gain three strength from every Enrage instead of two. So me going in and saying, well, I hope they're doing a small attack on the first one, but not the vulnerability attack. Uh, that was never going to happen. I was just wrong. I shouldn't have, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have hoped for that because it was just not a possibility. Got to get adjusted again to how this works in this ascension. I'll take a self-repair. Ooh, yes, please. Sure, I'll just take a sweeping beam as value pick here. I'll dig for the relic. More bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when you spend any gold at shop. There's a shop next floor. Uh, there's a claw on sale. Usually I would remove a card here, but we don't have the opportunity to. So I'll actually hold on to the more bank for a little longer. I'm going to have a lot of money and very little HP. It's okay though. Unfortunately, I didn't get... Oh my god, Symbiotic Virus at the start of each combat, channel 1 Dark. That is a ridiculously powerful card. It's especially powerful because it's not even a card, it's a relic. It's a really, really powerful way to make a card, to make it a relic instead. Uh, I mean... I want to fight another elite, but I also don't want to die. I'm doing it. Oh, God. <laughs> Bad decision immediately, apparently. Fusion will be nice, at least. They had to have regen, eh? I'm just checking. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it's fine, you know? Another 10 incoming. Not bad, not bad. Two strikes and a dual cast next turn, please. It doesn't really work, but I have to strike the frontliner before I dual cast, otherwise the frontliner gets hit twice here. So what, I'm going to leave this fight on 12 HP. That is to say, if I leave this fight. Wow! Lightning! What was that? That was a 25% chance for the backliner to get hit by both of the lightnings there which would prevent me from killing the frontliner. So, you know, you know, just, just, you know, you know, you know, right? Y you know, let's try that again. I'm definitely taking a lot of early risks. I don't necessarily apologize for that, but they're not really paying off at all. And that's what I apologize for. Not my actions, but the results of them. 
That's, that's all of the best apologies, right? I'm sorry that you got hurt by this. How much more exculpatory can you be? I like chill. I don't want to lose the 63 gold because there's probably going to be a card in the next store that I want to buy. Let's try the explosive potion, I think. Molten Egg! Whenever you add an attack into your deck, upgrade it. Yes! Yes, girl. Yes. Get it. I want it so bad. Uh, the Molten Egg is going to make a, what, like a couple of decks really, really good for us? Like Claw. Immediately upgrade every Claw in your deck. Uh, scrape would be particularly helpful for that kind of deck. You know what? We're doing it. We're taking Scrape. I'm also going to take this Power Potion to help me through one of the upcoming Elite Combats. Yeah. That's especially annoying. Meow's Lament got used up in a question mark space. I was really hoping to ace that first Elite easily. No. Okay, so with that scrape in the deck, I want to start getting some zero cost cards, so I'll upgrade the zap. So it's weird, but I think static discharge might be more impactful than echo form here. No. That's why I said I think. Ooh. Ooh, chill is really good. Okay, let's drop us out and then dual cast chill. So we cycle them all out. Defend to be fully defended. Ooh, I can even just double up on reinforced body next turn. But I don't want to, do I? So if I double strike, then play Reinforced Body after that, that's 14. I actually full defend. Yeah. Well, I'm never fully defending this turn, right? Best I can do is draw Zap. I don't want to waste so much damage on that scrape. I do want to double cast it. Fine. There we go. We'll only take one damage this turn. Single strike kills the backliner. Eh. Or I reinforce body to defend for more damage than these enemies could ever do. Thankfully, these enemies don't have regen, so this could actually work out for us. Alright. Sweeping Beam would be such a great card right about now. So I've done that very specifically to try and capitalize on as much of the extra damage offered. Ooh, come on. Don't you dare 25 me again. Yep, no, we got 25 again. We'll take eight damage as a result. Where's all this streamer luck I keep hearing about? It's because I don't stream yet. Uh, shovel. You can now dig for relics at rest sites. There's the claw that I was looking for. Do I... Yeah, whoa, whoa. I was about to say, do I still take it? But I actually made the decision to build the claw deck without seeing a single claw. That was dumb, by the way. Not a good thing to do, bad Ryan. But it worked out, so that means it was the correct thing to do. That's not how that works. But, eh. Let's ignore that for the moment. Varsha start each combat with one strength. And we'll even go for another elite. I have to wake up the enemy this turn. 
Pokemon needs to be played. Hell, Scrape too. Eh. Turn could have been a lot better. By looking a lot like this. Hell yeah, block for 21. Yes, I love me that uh, reinforced body in a zero cost deck. Oh, what a good elite fight. Uh, let her open it. Every time you'll play three skills in a single turn, deal five damage to all enemies. Second claw. Oh, the dream is real. The dream is getting realer. This dream is real as hell. Dream always been real. Uh, do I go for another elite? That is the question. Whether well, it is nobler... <laughs> I'm not going to do it, Tori. Um... I'll go for the extra elite. I don't need to be goaded into it. All right. Easy. Took, what, one damage overall there? I'll take a single copy of Go for the Eyes. Some nice weakness in this deck. I have no ability to deal AoE in this entire deck. That is a big problem. Uh, the best I can do is play three skills in a single turn. At the very least, chill is going to be great for us. So we do have that upside, but it is worth noting this Gremlin Wizard is now going to attack this t uh, next turn. Okay, sorry. Back when the Ascensions... 16 through 20 were released. The Gremlin Wizard would attack on turn two. And I evidently still harbor a ridiculous amount of resentment about that to the point that I cannot actually forget that at some point in my life, that is how this worked. All right, well, reinforced bodies in my next turn, right? Sweet. I could theoretically... Yeah. It's not even that difficult to kill this turn. It was literally just as long as I drew a claw. Beam cell. If I get an all for one after this boss fight... Yeah? You know what I mean, right? Like, because... Whoo, ha, ha. What do you mean those weren't sentences? Ah, not what I was hoping to see there. All of that could have been better ordered. Uh, the reason I didn't want to play any of the rest of those cards is because I wanted to do my draw first. And unfortunately, my draw drew nothing for me. At the very least, we did get relatively lucky there and kill the right target. Put me down. Claw added to... Damn it. I, look, I was definitely getting ahead of myself there by saying Claw added to deck, but could have happened. I'm never really going to weaken an enemy in this combat, so go for the eyes is just damage. I need to consider it such. Very likely to pop the explosive potion next turn, especially if I can use a bunch of defenses. There we go. Thank you, reinforced body. Oh. What lovely gameplay here. It's another elite down. I'll be taking my pocket watch whenever you play three or less cards during your turn. Draw an additional three cards at the start of your next turn. Not very likely we trigger that. At all. Holograms actually probably the best card there for me. Bringing back Claw is particularly powerful. Uh, unless I end up with Reinforced Body on the third turn of this combat, I need to rest before I go into this boss fight. I desperately want to dig. I desperately want to upgrade, but I need to rest. Eh, not a bad first turn. So 
So six more damage. So if I strike this turn, the enemy is going to split. No. Nope. Don't want that. The enemy is going to split this turn, though, and I have no say in that. So may as well just deal as much damage as possible. Ah, I could have dealt more damage if I played two more cards for the letter opener. But I also wouldn't have drawn as many cards this turn from the pocket watch. So you kind of got to decide which you want. I wasn't even thinking about the pocket watch, though. So in my case, even though the decision I made right now, I would have made a gain. I made it with less information at the time. And as a result, probably wouldn't have decided it in the moment again. With the benefit of retrospect, I guess I can say that I would make a better decision. I mean, sure. So as it turns out, I could have gotten through that combat without taking any damage. But... It was still worth finding out. Take the reboot there. Uh, extra orb slots doesn't really mean too much for this deck. Usually the inserter is almost an instant pick, but not here. Uh, extra energy also doesn't mean too much for this deck. I think I take the orrery. Five card selections when I have a molten egg. And when claw is a common card. Ooh, Alright, so all of that was garbage. I'll probably just take a Sunder. It's pre-upgraded. It's a bunch of damage. I probably don't want another Beam Cell. I don't have much drawing the deck yet, so I will take an FTL for some kind of quote-unquote free damage. I do need some defense in this deck. I don't want Leap, though. Rebound. Not taking Barrage. Take the next Beam Cell. I am not particularly enthused by what just happened there. I'm going to need a couple more Claws before I feel comfortable about it. All right, let's have a look at all of these elites. There is a ridiculous path. I'm going to start here regardless. But there's a ridiculous three elite path off to the right. Sorry, the delay when I'm trying to tell you a... Cardinal? Direction? The delay when I'm trying to tell you a direction with respect to left and right uh, is because I can't tell left and right. I have to look at my hands. And depending on who you are, that could be considered fun and endearing. Or, Ryan, I need to know the directions right now. Ryan, I missed the exit. Great. We're not going to Disneyland, Ryan, anymore. No, we're going to the vet now. I'm actually changing plans. Also, I get taken to a vet, apparently. Uh, rebound FTL? Hologram's neat. I can pull a card back. Start with FTL, though. So I can hologram back the FTL and draw another card here. Yeah, I'll do it. Then I'll rebound the FTL. It doesn't draw a card here, but that's okay. I play the reinforced body. And now I should just be able to... Yeah. Damage all over the top of them. Thank you, FTL. Rip and tear pre-upgraded. I mean, it's 10 damage to an enemy twice for one energy. Yeah, it's just valuable right now. I have to take it. Remove a card from the deck? Sure. Pretty much always happy to do this. Should just be a standard strike basically all of the time unless I have something else. Like a curse. I typically target the backliner here. Because they both mirror each other for the first two turns. But then on the third turn, if they decide to do a large attack, the mugger does more damage than the looter. So I'm blocking for 4 already, so 4, 14, 4, 14, 18. Alright, so I was thinking whether or not I played Defend, Reinforce, Body here. The Defend would have just been so that I trigger the letter open in this turn, but I'd rather block for the full amount, thank you. Genetic Algorithm is going to be pretty nice here. Unfortunately, I can't kill the Mugger. I'll rebound a Claw to the top of the deck, that always happens. 
I guess I just defend again. Give me more claws! Please. Let's hologram back the claw again. Actually, I probably should have just defended that turn. Yeah, I had Sunder in the next turn. That should have just been a fully defensive turn, though. That's my bad. Reprogram. Look at the top four cards in your draw pile. You may discard any of them. In the same hand as Scrape. That can be pretty good. Uh, just... I don't know why this isn't working. I can't right-click. It just flashes. Oh, sorry about that. My apologies for anyone with photosensitivity. I hope that wasn't a problem. Um, reprogram. It'll help me discard anything that's not zero cost for the sake of the scrape, but only if it's in the same hand as the scrape, right? Because if they're even one hand separated from one another, there is absolutely no combo factor. I will have already drawn my hand. Uh, and considering the deck is only going to get thicker with claws especially, Reprogram is difficult to play. Uh, Reprogram is ideally a deck that you play when you have like a bunch, or, or rather a card you play, in a deck where you have a bunch of trash cards or a bunch of card draw so you can mitigate the card negativity of reprogram and draw into the cards that you get from it or rather curate using it uh and then the final situation would be when you are playing an all for one deck and the reason is because you use reprogram to discard all of your zero costs that you see and then they're in your discard pile and then you all for one them it's not bad you can just take a sweeping beam to some aoe here and i think i kind of need to we do need a little bit of aoe in this deck Necronomicon. Ooh, Necronomicon actually is kind of beneficial. I do have the Sunder. Enchiridion is obviously the one I'm hoping for, though. Enchiridion! Start of each combat, add a random power card to your hand, and go zero for that combat. Neat. I'm always pretty sad to see Runic Capacitor and not be able to buy it, but there's a cool headed and a good instinct. Yeah. I want some card draw in the deck that cycles, and I definitely need some more defense right now. I desperately want to be digging and upgrading, but... Like, there's no way not to fight an elite at this point. Elite, 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 so... Ooh, Static Discharge, yes! I'm going to rip and tear, hologram, rip and tear here, because this, I think, is actually just going to become a damage race. Uh-huh. I'm generating all of that extra lightning on turn one. I mean, it's pretty helpful. Claw, claw, go for the eyes. Go for the eyes turned up really, really late for us, unfortunately. Could have been so much more useful earlier. Uh, Lantern started to combat with additional energy, as well as an Emerald Potion. Another copy of Hologram. Probably dodge all of the rest of the elites this floor. Rebound Claw to the top of the deck. Use FTL to immediately draw it. I should have used the Ancient Potion to prevent that, though. Right, reboot. Find me some defense. That's not defense. In fact, that's literally no def... That is the least defense you could have provided me. Oof. It's okay. The only health point that matters is your last, and it looks like we're going to be losing that one as well. <laughs> Damn it. I definitely should have used the Ancient Potion there. So it's, it's rare that I'll do this, which is why it didn't immediately come to mind. But I should have used the Ancient Potion to prevent the vulnerability from the backliner. Um, I killed the backliner there, which removed 6 damage from the field. But it also increased the damage on the frontliner by 10. So I only removed negative 4 damage from the field. Um, removing the target from the field is pretty important, though. So that you can singularly focus your damage afterwards. 
especially in a deck that doesn't have that much AoE. Reboot, not picking us up any defensive cards, isn't actually unbounded, right? Like, there's not that many defensive cards in the deck. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, that's only almost half of my deck. Between half and a third. Closer to a third, but still. <sighs> yeah, especially due to the fact that the Shelled Parasite definitely attacks every turn, and I knew that I was going to have vulnerability applied to me. I should have used the Ancient Potion to prevent the vulnerability. I wasn't thinking about the fact that the front line, uh, sorry, the frontliner. Uh, the Shelled Parasite definitely attacks every single turn, so it was actually going to be a significant savior of damage to us. For the moment, though, looks like the Defect Streak is dead. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves regardless. Uh, there is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you.